Hello friends, this video on neat electromagnetic induction is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Question number 19. In the circuit of figure, the bulb will become suddenly bright if contact is made or broken, contact is made, contact is broken, none of the above. Now see, if the contact is made, that means if you complete, the, now when the contact is broken, that time um, there would be no current flowing and the bulb would not glow. Now when the contact is made, the bulb would glow, but during that time only the main current flows through the circuit. Right? Now what happens when the main current flows through the circuit, some energy is also stored in the inductor. Because please note here that you have an inductor here. So the inductor stores some energy in its magnetic field. Now what's going to happen? Now the moment you break the contact. Now once the contact is made, after that, <coughs> if you suddenly break the contact, then what happens? No, earlier it was only the main current which was flowing through the circuit but now the self-induced current will also flow in the circuit. Now because of that self-induced current also flowing in the circuit, the bulb will glow more bright. So the bulb will suddenly um, become very bright only for that moment when the contact is broken. It is not that you break the contact and the uh, bulb will keep glowing bright forever. It is not like that. But the moment you break the contact, that time the bulb will become suddenly very bright because there is main current in the circuit plus there is also self-induced current in the circuit because of that inductor. So the correct option is C. Question number 20. A rod of length L rotates with a uniform angular velocity omega about its perpendicular bisector. A uniform magnetic field B exists parallel to the axis of rotation. The potential difference between two ends of the rod is. So let us try this in this fashion. Let's say that you have a rod like this and this length of the rod is L. Let's say that this line shows the center of the rod. Okay, so we consider a small element dx, let's say this is a small element dx which is at a distance x from the center of the rod. Okay, now for this small element dx we will try to find out the emf for this particular, this small element. So the small emf de will be equal to b cross v into dx because here length is this small length. So B cross V, what would be that? So that will be equal to B cross V. So here again, B, V sine theta, theta will be 90 degree because here it says that uh, the rod is perpendicular, right? So this would be B, V into dx. Now here, the question is talking in terms of angular velocity. And we know that linear velocity is equal to R into angular velocity. So we will make use of this relation. So we can write instead of linear velocity, we can write R omega into dx. And what is R in this case? So R is the distance of this small element from the center. So that distance is x. So this R is basically x here. So that is dE. Now what do we want to do? We actually want to calculate the potential difference between the two ends of the rod. That means we want to calculate the potential difference bet from between point A and B. So what we will do is first we will calculate the potential difference at point A with respect to point O that is the center. So let's first do that. So for that what we will do we will integrate on both sides. So this side it will be E is equal to here B is constant omega is also constant so integration of x dx from x is equal to 0 because we are considering from the center to x is equal to L by 2. So this much distance will be L by 2. So 0 to L by 2. So this will be equal to B omega x square by 2 from 0 to L by 2. So this will be equal to B omega L square by 8 minus 0. So this will be equal to B omega L square by 8. So this is the potential difference between the center and one end of the rod. 
right now we have to find out the potential difference between the two ends of the rod so that means the potential difference potential difference between center and one end a is b omega l square by 8 similarly potential difference between the center and the other end would also be the same b omega l square divided by 8 but they are on two opposite ends so when you that means the potential at this point and this point they are the same so the potential difference between these two will be zero so zero is the right option so see this is a very nice way of solving such questions because when you consider small element and then integrate you always arrive at the right result so i think this approach is a very important one because a lot of students get confused with this approach to solve problems problems okay question number 21 a conducting square loop of side l and resistance r moves in its plane with a uniform velocity v perpendicular to one of its sides okay a uniform and constant magnetic field b exists along the perpendicular to the plane of the loop as shown in the figure the current induced in the loop is so here again because of the motion of the loop so the perpendicular uh, the magnetic field is constant uh, i mean not changing but the uh, conducting loop is moving so it is the case of motional emf so emf will be equal to b cross v into l so here theta is equal to 90 degree as very clearly mentioned here so sine theta will be 1 so this is equal to b v l now for better understanding let us name the loop like this a b c and d now when we say that the entire loop is moving so here an interesting thing to be noted is that now this particular end of the loop and this particular end of the loop they are not perpendicular they might not be perpendicular to the plane to the magnetic field so basically let's try to make use of the right hand rule to understand the direction of the induced current so we see that the magnetic field is in the downward direction so the current would move in the clockwise direction that means the current would flow somewhat like this so this is how the induced current would flow this is the direction of the induced current basically so now the emf that will get induced along the length a b now this length is l right so along the length a b the emf induced will be b v l Similarly, along the length DC, the EMF induced will be BVL but in the opposite direction, right? So, over the complete loop, what will be the net EMF that will get induced? So, the net induced current over the entire loop will be equal to 0. Question number 22. The two rails of a railway track insulated from each other and from the ground are connected to a millivolt meter. What will be the reading of the millivolt meter when a train travels on the track at a speed of 180 km per hour? Let's say that this is the railway track and the distance between the two tracks is 1 meter and a train moves in this direction at 180 km per hour. So again here if you see this is also the case of motional EMF. So the induced EMF will be equal to B cross V into L. So what are the values that are given here? So B is given here, V is also given here and L is given as 1 meter and theta anyways will is uh, perpendicular so it is uh, sine theta will be 1. So B is 0 0.2 into 10 to the power minus 4 into V is 180 km per hour. So we will change it into meter per second into L. So this comes out to be 10 to the power minus 3 volts that is 1 millivolt. Question number 23. The magnetic field at a point inside a 2 milli Henry inductor coil becomes 0 0.80 of its maximum value in 20 microseconds when the inductor is joined to a battery. Find the resistance of the circuit. So here the, we see that it talks about the change in the value of the magnetic field. So here basically we are talking about the growth of current. 
so we have learned that in during growth of current i is equal to i not 1 minus e to the power minus t by tau right and what is tau tau is equal to l by r so i is equal to i not 1 minus e to the power minus t r by l now now we know that for a solenoid because here we are talking about an inductor coil what is the value of magnetic field magnetic field is given by mu n i where n is number of turns per unit length correct so therefore we see that magnetic field is also directly proportional to current so we can say that b is equal to b naught 1 minus t to the power minus t capital r by l Right? So now what is the value of B? It is 0 0.80 times of maximum value. So 0 0.80 times of maximum value. This is equal to B naught into 1 minus E to the power minus T R by L. So B naught, B naught will get cancelled. So E to the power minus T R by L will be equal to 1 minus 0 0.80 which is equal to 0 0.20. Now minus T if we then take natural log on both sides then this will be minus t r by l log e is equal to 1 and this side it will be natural log of 0 0.20 so therefore r is equal to minus l by t into ln 1 minus ln 5 so we have just done this calculation so this 0 0.20 can be written as 20 divided by 100 that is 1 by 5. The natural log of 1 by 5 can be written as ln 1 minus ln 5. So putting all these values that is minus L by T into 0 natural log of 1 is 0 minus 1.6. So finally we get R is equal to 160 ohms. So you can do this calculation yourself and you will see that R comes out to be 160 ohms. Question number 24, consider a small cube of volume 1 millimeter cube at the center of a circular loop of radius 10 centimeter carrying a current of 4 ampere. Find the magnetic energy stored inside the tube. So how do we calculate magnetic energy that is being stored by energy density? So we have learned that energy density is given by V square by 2 mu naught. So if we have to find out the amount of energy that is stored, so that would be equal to because energy density is energy per unit volume. So if you know energy density and you have to find out energy, then you will multiply it by volume. Right? Now we know that magnetic field at the center of the loop is how much? So we have learned all these things in the magnet, magnetism chapter that magnetic field at the center of a circular loop is equal to mu naught i by 2r. So therefore energy will be equal to instead of v you, we will write mu naught i by 2r whole square divided by 2 mu naught into volume will be of a cube will be equal to side cube so side okay anyways volume of the cube is given so let's keep it as v right so now we will put the values mu naught is 4 pi into 10 to the power minus 7 so before that let's simplify it further this would be mu naught i square divided by 2 into 2, 4 R into V. So here you have R square as well. So now we will put the values. So mu naught is 4 pi into 10 to the power minus 7 I square. So current is 4 ampere. So 4 square into volume is uh, 1 millimeter cube. That is 1 into 10 to the power minus 9 meter cube divided by 4 into r square r is 10 centimeter that is 10 into 10 to the power minus 2 meters so this square so now when you calculate this you get it as 8 pi into 10 to the power minus 14 joules so this much is the magnetic energy that is stored inside the cube so with this we have reached towards the end of this lesson on electromagnetic induction and i hope that 
all these numericals will give you a better insight on what kind of questions from electromagnetic induction are generally asked in NEET so that you can practice similar sort of questions and also uh, uh, focus on the approach that we use to solve a problem. So keep practicing more and I hope that this lesson would have helped you. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.